Welcome to Nextara TV, a free resource that uses video tutorials to explain IT topics. My name is Emily, and today's video is Microsoft Word 2010 Basic User Guide, Lesson 2. In this video, I'll be talking about the Home tab. I will show you helpful tools like copy and paste, and I'll be talking about options and tools for fonts and paragraphs. Okay, let's get started. So the first area we want to show you on the Home tab is right up here, and it's your Paste, Copy, and Cut functions. And to copy and paste, that is uh, when you are making a copy of your original text and pasting a copy of that text into a new location in your document. So in order to do that, you're going to first highlight some text that you'd like to copy and paste. Come up here and click your copy button. Then you move your cursor to where you would like um, to paste the new text. And then you just click your paste button. And that's copy and pasting. Uh, the other function that I like to show you is cut and paste. And that is when you are actually taking your original text, cutting it, and moving it to a new location in your document. So to do that, uh, similarly, you highlight whatever text you'd like to move. This time you're going to click the cut button. Move the cursor to where you'd like the cut text to show up. Click the paste button, and you have cut and pasted. All right, now there are additional paste functions that we do want to go over. So we're just going to go up to the paste button, click the down arrow, and that'll pull up some other button functions. The first button that you can choose is keep source formatting. And uh, when you choose this paste option, that means that all formatting will be transferred from copied text when you paste. The next button is merge formatting. And this means that copy text will be changed to match the formatting around it when it's pasted. Keep text only, uh, when this button is selected, it means that no formatting will be transferred from any copy text. And um, we also want to touch quickly on when you click the set default paste, because these are some other um, paste functions that we want to cover. And so you'll just scroll down to the cut, copy, and paste section. And um, this is where you're going to want to come should you want to change um, the, the default settings for pasting between different Word documents or if you're pasting information from a different program entirely. All you're going to do is come to whichever of those apply to you and you can just click merge formatting or keep text only or keep source formatting, um, any of those options, whichever fits your need for the moment. And this would also be where you would come if you need to change um, the paste functions for bullets and numbers. Let's also talk about the Format Painter tool. And this tool allows you to copy formatting from one place to another. So what you want to do to use this tool is copy um, some formatting that you'd like to use. So just to show you an example, um, we're going to copy this, um, this red and italicized formatting and we go up and click the Format Painter tool. And then your cursor becomes a paintbrush, and you can just sweep over um, whatever else you'd like to turn into that formatting. I'd also like to cover the clipboard. So to get to your clipboard, you'll just click this button, and it pops right up. And your clipboard is just where um, all your recent copy and pastes are moved to. So you can come here, and if instead of recopying something exactly from the document, um, if you know you've recently used a chunk of text that you want to get to again, you can just come here and put your cursor where you'd like that chunk of text to display, and click the chunk of text, and it gets placed into your document. And if you want to remove one of these um, chunks of text from your clipboard listing, all you do is click the Delete button, or if you want to remove them all, you can click the Clear All button. Next, let's cover font. In the font area of the Home tab, you'll see various tools. Uh, by mousing over each of these tools, you'll get a description of the tool. So as you can see, uh, right here is your font, and you can change your font um, to various different styles. You can also change the size of your font. Um, this right here is your Grow Font button, and that'll grow your font. Or if you click this, this is your Shrink Font, and that'll size down your font. Um, this is your case change button, and so if you pull down this arrow, um, you can either make things lowercase, uppercase, um, just different capitalization options. This button right here is your clear formatting button. So if you click this button, all formatting will be removed from the text. This is your bold button. 
Um, this will make your text italicized and this button will underline. And if you pull down this arrow besides, you can also change what type of underlining the text is. The button right here is called your strike through button. And this button actually puts um, a line through your text. This is good for editing purposes. This is your subscript button. This is good for, you know, say chemistry formulas. Um, your superscript button. This button right here is your text effect button. And if you pull down this arrow, um, you can look through some different options that are down here. You can also do an underlined shadow, reflection, and glow. The button next to it is the highlight button and this will highlight your text. And if you pull down the arrow beside it, you can change what color you're highlighting. You can stop highlighting or say no color. This button right here is your font color. And um, if you click this button, you can use it to scroll through the different colors to change your font color. Um, you also have the option to choose more colors here. So you can pick a very specific color. We also have what is called the font dialog box and you get to it by clicking this little arrow down here and it'll pop right up. And this is where your advanced font settings are. So we're gonna quickly go through these. So first up is scale. And you're gonna wanna keep an eye down here because it'll show you um, how the different changes that we're making is affecting your text that you have selected. So what scale does is scale changes the size of the text in relation to the base line um, text size. So if you click that, it will shrink it down or that would make it wider. Your spacing button increases and decreases the space between letters uh, compared to the baseline. So if you wanted to expand the spacing, you can just control it there and you'll notice that the spacing gets wider. Your position button rises or lowers the characters compared to the normal baseline. So if you want to lower your baseline, you would just click up or down and then you see how it would change in accordance to that. Kerning is the space between certain pairs of characters, like for example, A and V. Um, they have complementary shapes, so they can be spaced closer together than other um, letters. And if you wanted to change that, you, if you wanted to change the kerning feature, you would just click kerning and you can change the scale up and down with those arrows. The other area I wanna talk about is paragraph. And in this section of the home tab, uh, you will see lots of paragraph tools and again, you can mouse over them and get a description of what each of these tools does. So the first one is the bullet tool. And what it does is makes a bulleted list. And you have this little icon right here. The arrow um, will let you pull down different bullet libraries that you could choose from. The next button in the row is numbering, which will let you start a numbered list. And again, it has an arrow that you can choose to maybe make it uh, Roman numerals or you could do um, lettering um, for your numbered list. The next button is the multi-level list. And if you click that, um, there are also other options that you can choose. Uh, this is really good for an outline. These two buttons are your increase and decrease indent button. So to show that, um, this button increases your indent and this button decreases your indent. The next button is called sort and this will let you alphabetically sort your text or any kind of number data. This is your show hide button and this button will allow you to show hidden formatting symbols that are all throughout your document. Or you can um, undo that button and then the hidden symbols will remain hidden. These four buttons right here are your page alignment buttons. Um, you can choose between a left alignment, a center alignment, a right alignment, or you can also choose um, this button, which is your justified alignment, and that means that they are spaced evenly on each side. This is your line and paragraph spacing button, and uh, with this, you can customize the amount of space that you have before or after paragraphs. So if you just click this, um, it'll let you change the spacing, and you can also add space before or remove space after paragraphs with this button. This is your shading tool. And again, if you click this down arrow, it will let you um, pick different shades that you could um, basically kind of highlight your text with. Um, it's, it's your background color, if you will. And you can also um, choose more colors if you need a different palette.
This is your border tool, and if you click the down arrow, it will show you um, all the different borders that you could choose from. So if you wanted a left border, um, you would just select that, and to undo that, you just reselect it, and that'll go away. I also want to touch quickly on the paragraph dialog box, and to pull that up, you just click the little down arrow, and in here there's two sections. There's the indent and spacing section, which is basically a lot of the tools that we had just gone over. Um, here you can choose what kind of alignment you want. Uh, you can choose the outline level and the, le the spacing of your indent um, and spacing before and after lines. Uh, but we want to get a little bit more into the page and line break area. Line and page breaks, this is the section where um, you can control how a paragraph will break at the bottom of a page. If you select window and orphan control, this selection will make sure that a paragraph will break with at least two lines on each page at the bottom of a page. Um, now if you select keep with next, the paragraph won't be on a different page from the paragraph that it follows. So you would select this if you have two paragraphs that you want to make sure stay on the same page, um, you would click keep with next and those paragraphs would not be separated. Keep lines together will prevent a paragraph from breaking at all. So this, if this is selected, um, the whole paragraph will show on one page. And page break before, if this is selected, um, the paragraph will start on a new page. So this selection is very useful if you are writing a book and you want to make sure that a chapter starts on a new page every time, or perhaps you have um, section titles in a document that need to start on new pages. So if you select page break before, um, this will ensure that the paragraph starts on a new page. Thank you again for joining Nextar TV for Microsoft Word 2010 Basic User Guide Lesson 2. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to visit www.nextar.tv for other tutorials or subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com front slash nextara.